So hi guys, uh, today what we're going to be doing is uh, something similar to what I did uh, with the infinite zoom on After Effects, but we're going to be using Apple Motion uh, to create uh, this infinite zoom. Um, we're going to be using Midjourney 5.2, which allows for you to actually zoom out of anything you've created uh, as many times as you like. And uh, I will be using this image I created based on Anslam Kiefer's uh, name as a uh, painter. I really like his style. Um, and what we've done is I started with an image uh, of poppies, as you can see here. And I asked uh, Midjourney to upscale this and zoom it out uh, by two. And then I got this, and then I get this, and this, and this, and this, and you get the idea. So download all the images uh, to the computer. Um, and uh, put them in the order of number one being the, f the farthest away and the one at the bottom here is number 21. Uh, this is zoomed out as far as possible. So this is 21 iterations in mid-journey. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started now that we have the images downloaded and in the right order. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, Apple Motion and uh, start a new project. So we're going to go to File New if it's not already up. I'm going to make this project uh, 2048 by 2048. That's double the size of the images we get from mid-journey. Uh, and I'm going to make sure the aspect ratio is square. If you don't see the word custom under preset, you can select it there. I'm also uh, making this a minute and 30 seconds uh, long. Uh, that's just my preference. And I'm going to select open. Uh, Windows reset. Let's see. Hopefully your uh, window isn't all over the place like mine. It should look a little bit like this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is select this group and delete it. Uh, this way anything we import at this point will get its own group and that's what we're looking for. I'm going to select the import button in the upper left hand corner and I'm going to find my folder with the images as you can see and I'm going to make sure they're listed from uh, the smallest number to the largest number. If it's not, select the name and that should change the order. Uh, but what you want is the number, the smallest number at the top, shift select to the bottom number, If you do that, uh, what you're going to get is the, the largest number at the top and the smallest number at the bottom. And that's what we're going to look for. Um, we want the tiniest number at the bottom and everything has its own group. Uh, so we're going to be starting with um, the bottom and working our way up. I'm going to go ahead and select all, command A, and then turn the visibility on all of them off. And then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and turn on this group and the first image, which is the image that's the most zoomed in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and collapse that group because that is where we're gonna start. Now, if I turn on the group above it, you'll notice that it is actually zoomed out. The group that's below it should be going inside of this. It should be half the size. If I wanted um, this group here to fit inside of this group, I would have to make this group smaller so it would fit inside of that window. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to select that bottom group, go to the Inspector tab, Properties, and we're going to select our scale, and we're going to select 50%. Uh, and we're going to make this group, the one that's below, 50%. But we cannot see that group because that other group is above us. So we're going to take that group, and we're going to bring it up and put it in between the image and that number group here. And if we do that, you'll notice that if I turn it on and off, we can now see um, the edge of that group uh, right in our frame and you can see it gets a little bit sharper in the middle of the detail and that's what we're going to want to do we're going to uh, collapse this group it's all done we see one image here and then the next image uh, and then we're going to turn on the group above it again it's um, zoomed out a little bit so we got to take this group uh, we're going to put it between group two uh, and our image here and we need to make it 50% of the size so that it fits inside and if you do that you'll notice I can turn it on and off it just sharpens and you can kind of see these squares uh, that go in and out and you're going to continue to do this move this here turn everything on select it make it 50% of the size uh, and you can turn it on and off and you'll see uh, a little cascade like the Russian dolls um, so I'm going to Go ahead and speed this up because um, I'm just going to do the same thing over and over again. I'm going to select it, put it in between these two things, uh, select that group, 
make it 50 percent and uh, test it to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Okay, and the last one, uh, again, the same thing, 50%. Uh, and now we have it uh, completely zoomed out uh, and um, we can collapse it. And now group 20, uh, if I wanted to scale this in, you can see, whoop, if I went really far, in fact, I'm just gonna type in 30,000. You can see we are at 30,000. I'm gonna type 30,000 times two and that's zoomed in and you can keep going uh, and you can see it doesn't lose any of its sharpness here. All right, so we're going to go back to 200% or 100% so we can see the entire image. Um, if we open up group 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and go ahead and do this. I'm going to open this up for you so you can see. You'll see that everything is nicely uh, set up here. So we're going to add a mask to each one of the images. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the second to outer one because I can actually see that, as you can see here. And I'm going to turn off the bottom frame just so we can see this frame. Uh, we're going to start with a mask here, and then we're just going to copy the mask to each of these images that are in the groups. Uh, the way you make a mask in uh, Adobe and Apple Motion here is just to click on the mask tool and you click, hold, and drag uh, the mask around the area you want to create, and then uh, it'll actually create a little mask here, and you'll have the uh, possibilities of fixing the mask here. Uh, I, you can see that I didn't quite get the perfect mask, so I'm going to make it um, uh, 1024, and that's going to make a mask that fits perfectly on this image. Uh, I'm going to uh, feather the mask. Feather negative 100, I think, is what I want. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So uh, you can kind of see that it's already starting to feather here and then the fall off 100 will allow it to go in further. And then we're gonna lose some of this information, but it's gonna blend much more nice, much nicer with the image below. You can kind of see here, uh, there's almost no transition at this point. So this mask works perfectly for this 1024 image. Every image here is 1024. So the, what I'm gonna do is hold this, uh, click on this mask while holding the option key on the keyboard on the Mac, and then I'm going to drag it, and that's going to duplicate the mask uh, to that. And you can kind of see if I turn these off so you can see that means that mask is on this uh, image right now. And we're going to just do this all the way up the stack. Uh, I'll go ahead and speed this up, but it's again, we're just option dragging, option dragging, option dragging. Okay, take a few seconds here. Okay, so now we have a mask on each one of these elements and they're all feathered. All right, in fact, I'm just gonna close this group up and not worry about it. Okay, the next part of uh, this process is our zooming. Uh, and you can uh, do that fairly easy. Uh, we're going to be using group 20 or the, large, the outside group here, and we're gonna zoom in uh, using that. So we're gonna start zoomed out like this. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up our scale tool and add a keyframe uh, to all our elements here. We won't need Z, so I'll just reset that parameter so it's not selected, and we're at 100%. Uh, if I fit this to, you can see it's only 100%. If I wanna start at 200, I just type 200, and then I'll start here at 200. I'm gonna scooch the playhead uh, to the end, and what I'm gonna do is type the scale number. I'm gonna use uh, 100,000 and see how far we get. Okay, that's not enough. I'm going to try 500,000, 20 million. There we go. So it looks like if we zoom in to 20 million, and you can kind of see I have my animation uh, element here. Let's see if we can get this to, to fit. It's a linear zoom, as you can kind of see. And what happens is it zooms okay at the end, but you'll notice it goes much, much faster here. In fact, so fast that if you were to just play this, it would do that. So this type of zoom that we have here is not uh, acceptable for the type of thing that we're, uh, we've, we've done. What we need to do is uh, make this an exponential zoom. So what I'm gonna do is select the first keyframe, hold my shift key again and select the last keyframe. 
and then I'm going to uh, hold my uh, or right mouse button click or control button and I'm going to select interp interpolation and select exponential now that's doing it for the X but it's not done it for the Y so I'm going to select the Y and interpolation exponential you want both of those to be selected and if you do that uh, and nothing much happens here you can see it's fairly flat but once you get about uh, 30 seconds in you'll notice that everything actually looks like it's zooming in at a constant pace on Apple it's not the, the best uh, exponential zoom which is why I use After Effects uh, but it is acceptable and you will get this infinite zoom uh, the way you were expecting it um, you can kind of see as we get closer to the end here uh, it's a pretty consistent and continuous zoom at this point there's not much else to do but other than export it uh, if you want to add uh, some type of L feature you, or you want to change your um, like endpoint to start at a certain point, you can do that here. Uh, I sometimes add uh, an object like a camera um, and that allows me to uh, add uh, a property uh, on the X and Y position here called wiggle. So like I'll add a little bit of a wiggle and what that gives you is this ability to kind of zoom in with a little bit of motion obviously uh, 100 pixels of movement is a little much so I'll try 50 and I'll do uh, add and subtract um, I'll just do add actually that's fine maybe make the frequency 0.5 and it gives us a little bit of movement uh, you can kind of just see it here and it works really nicely and it works all the way through and so really what's happening is that we're seeing things through the camera and you can see with this perspective view uh, that camera is just kind of like showing off that image that we're scaling so big and here's what it looks like really big right too crazy uh, and we're just getting and we're just zooming it in while the the cameras uh, just kind of wiggling around here you can kind of see how that works so back to active camera all right finally ready for export so I'm gonna hit the share button here and export the movie Go to my settings. Uh, if you want high quality and you're going to bring this into Premiere, I would definitely suggest Apple ProRes LT. Uh, I don't need the audio, so I'll turn that off. I'm selecting the entire project, no audio. And I go to the Red Room settings and make sure it's set to best. Turn off. If you've added wiggle, please turn off the um, motion blur. Uh, otherwise, you'll get kind of just smeary motion and all your sharpness will be gone. Uh, and then make sure you've got your camera selected. Mine is the active camera, which is fine. Uh, highest quality will put the motion blur on, so do not put that on, and you don't need the depth of field. Uh, hit the next button, and we're gonna just call this K Motion 2. And it'll be done. Uh, you can click on this little thing here, and it'll be done when uh, this taskbar is finished, and you will get uh, this beautiful zooming in uh, feature that you can now add to Premiere or back into Motion uh, in order to, you know, uh, maybe crop it uh, to a different aspect ratio, uh, vertical or horizontal. Uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please, if you did enjoy this video, it made sense and you own Apple Motion, uh, please subscribe. Um, I would love to have more subscribers. Uh, and it's also helping the channel. I've been doing these uh, videos, uh, you know, kind of gratis. And it'd be nice to achieve a thousand viewers uh, and um, maybe see what, you know, Adobe pays you for, for putting up these videos and taking your time for them. All right. Uh, have a good day. Uh, thanks for watching.